In education, I think we need to respond to the changing world. Um, there are many influences, uh, probably three main ones that I can think of. The advances in technology, we're seeing such rapid change. The students that we have in front of us have been a part of that their whole lives. So they're used to things happening quickly, they're used to being entertained, um, and so we need to respond to that to keep them engaged in the classroom. Our assessment processes are changing. NZQA are looking now to, uh, to assess on computers rather than on paper. And the final one is looking to the future because the jobs that these girls are going to be doing are going to be very different from the jobs that we have done or the jobs that are available now. I'm looking at preparing the students that I have now for the future by focusing on skills rather than knowledge because the teacher no longer needs to be the knowledge base. Knowledge is out there. We need to teach our students how to sift through it. So it's really looking at teaching them to find the information, to look for solutions to problems. Looking at their strengths is another thing they need to do. Recognising what their strengths are so that they can work collaboratively with others. We do quite a bit of work um, in small groups. So there'll be a lot of research tasks that we do, um, which helps people like me who do love working in a group and finding out the different ideas and the different perspectives because you know you could put a text in front of somebody and someone will see it one way and someone will see it another. Um, so particularly in English and art history where um, things are so subjective, it's been really good to sort of work in small groups so that you can see how different people will see it. So my inquiry is focusing on using the tools we have now with BYOD. I'm using a digital textbook. We use OneNote, um, the class book, and I've got various other programs that I use with the students. So this has meant that some of the old ways that we used to do things have really changed now. Um, cutting down on paper is, is a big benefit of using OneNote class book because I can put the resources on there for the students. They can see those digitally, they can work with them digitally, they can collaborate with each other when they're not in the classroom, which is really important. And what I'm finding with those old resources is that I can change them, make them more appropriate for the learning that they're doing now. And also, students used to have maybe three or four exercise books that they used to have to carry around with them. So the, the problems that I had with girls forgetting their exercise books has really disappeared now. For quite a few of my subjects at the moment, we're using a lot more sort of online-based um, technology, so a lot of Google Docs, Google Classrooms, and that sort of stuff, which is great for someone like me who is terrible with technology and wouldn't know how to switch on a computer, but because of um, this sort of inclusion and us sort of going, okay, well, we need to adapt our learning ability and how we're teaching um, different skills and stuff to sort of, you know, to help with uh, future employment, I suppose. So it's been quite good to have, you know, this is how you can access this or access that. We have like something like Google Docs or Google Classroom where the teacher can like pop in and see what you're doing and if you have any questions, um, you just ask the teacher over Google Docs or anything and they can like point out things that you need to fix. So um, it's really helpful because you see where your mistakes are and where you need to do better. By watching the students learning, I want to see if they're able to be more immersed in the language. Uh, the problem we have with Year 9 is only seeing them five times across a fortnight. They don't really have as much exposure to the language as I would like. So by using these tools and personalising what they're doing, with the tools at home in their own time, they can listen to texts for a second time if they feel that they need to. They can go onto other programs and focus on language that they are particularly having difficulty coming to grips with. So what I've learned by watching my students is that they actually still need me as a facilitator. I'm having to show them how to use the tools that are at their disposal and how to manage those tools. Um, and by doing that, I'm certainly having to learn myself how to, how to use the tools and so be confident with the use of OneNote, for example, and really get to grips with the digital textbook. We're hoping that uh, the students gain some skills, that they are able to feel more in charge of their learning, that they are able to personalise their learning, and we're hoping that by doing that they'll become connected learners, that they'll become engaged with their learning, that they'll be able to um, be curious about language and the knowledge that's out there.